Mm, pardon me. Hello and welcome. It is time for more beer and more code. Today, we continue our series on Kotlin, and we will be solving Project Euler problems in Kotlin. If you are not familiar with Project Euler, I have a video that I did uh, that talks about it in a little bit more detail. Um, so check that out if you're not familiar. But essentially what it is, is it's a list of problems kind of that start off really easy and get harder as they go. And we're just going to tackle them from one until as far as we get. Uh, we will be doing them within an Android app. Um, the Android content will be light, so you don't have to worry about not knowing Android development. Um, but I will be taking these these uh, Project Euler problems and writing them in sort of a Java-like style, and then converting that code into a more idiomatic Kotlin style code. The goal here is to help you look at your existing Java code base and convert it into Kotlin style code. Um, today, I'm drinking one of my favorite, favorite beers. Unfortunately, it does not distribute very far out of my city or out of my state, uh, but it is called Surly Extra Citra. It's a session pale ale, so you can have a lot of them on a warm summer day like today. Uh, so cheers. Let's uh, let's get solving some, some Project Euler problems. All right, first problem. Let's hop into it here. Uh, if we list all the natural numbers below 10 that are multiples of 3 or 5, we get 3, 5, 6, and 9. The sum of these multiples is 23. Find the sum of all multiples of 3 or 5 below 1,000. So what that means is we'll need to essentially loop through all the numbers from 1 to 999 and check to see if they're multiples of 3 or 5 and add those multiples up. All right, let's hop into the code. So there is this um, cool little Android Project Euler app that I've built that will allow us to easily solve these problems. Uh, let me show you what it looks like when I run it. And I will not go into how I built the app right now, uh, but I will have a video linked somewhere that will show you uh, how I did it. So what we'll do is we'll click the solve button and it will give us the answer. Um, we will be writing the code that will actually solve that correctly. So right now it's just returning the string solve me. Um, but what we'll need to do is change this lambda to return instead of the string solve me, a string representing the correct answer. So as the problem said, uh, we'll need to create a sum. So we have our sum and we'll need to loop the numbers from 1 to 1000. Uh, I in one until 1000 and that will include one but not 1000 now we'll do our check to see if it belongs in the sum so if I mod 3 is equal to 0 or I mod 5 is equal to 0 um, will sum plus equals I uh, and then I guess our result is just sum dot two string, uh, and that should give us the correct result. Ah. So let's hit the run button uh, and see what we get. Eventually. Okay, hit solve, and here's our answer. Um, let's. Copy that and paste it into, oops, paste it into our Project Euler thingy and type in the confirmation code 98141. Check. Yay. Okay. First one down. All right. So we are going to go back to the problems and tackle number two. So number, oh, no, I'm sorry. We're going to look at number one and actually turn this code into Kotlin code. Because right now, uh, this is some hideous code uh, as far as Kotlin code goes. So the first things first is we don't ever, well, we don't want to use var if we don't have to. 
Uh, second is we really don't want to do loops and do things in loops and then modifying variables that are declared outside of the loop. Uh, and second, if we can declare this function in one line, that would be pretty slick. So that's what we're going to do. Um, so what we're going, we're going to use this exact same one until 1000. And what that's going to do is that's going to return us a range that we can use. And now we're going to filter it. And filter is a function that takes in a predicate function. Um, and if, and it returns, it'll eventually return a list, the essentially a filtered version of this. And we want to return true if the item should be included in the resulting list. So really it's, this is the code here to include in the predicate. So we want to include, uh, we want to include the items in the list if they are divisible by three or divisible by five. And this is using Kotlin's built-in auto declared it, which will be uh, all of these numbers eventually. And then after we filtered it, we want to sum. And we want to use sum by, actually, no, we can just use sum. And then dot two string. So that actually becomes our solution. Um, so it's much tighter, uh, much, much more tidy code. So from one into a thousand, filter it for only things that are either divisible by three or divisible by five, uh, sum all of those ints up and then two string them. All right. Just for completeness sake, let's run the app again, hit solve and verify that it is two, three, three, one, six, eight. 233168. So we're still getting the correct answer. And now our code looks much more Kotlin idiomatic. And I would say much more succinct, much, much nicer. All right, let's move on to number two. We'll declare our Euler problem number two and have our solution. Uh, and we will fill that in once we know what the problem is. Okay, so for number two, even Fibonacci numbers. All right, so we have each new term in the Fibonacci sequence is generated by adding the previous two terms. By starting with one and two, the first 10 terms will be one, two, three, five, etc. By considering the terms in the Fibonacci sequence, sequence whose values do not exceed four million, find the sum of the even valued terms. Okay, one more time. So consider the terms in the Fibonacci sequence whose values are less than 4 million, sum the even valued terms. Okay, so we're gonna have to essentially list all the Fibonacci numbers that are below 4 million, and then sum the even ones. Okay, so first, um, we're gonna do a sum again. So bar sum is equal to zero, and we are going to have a let me think here we should have a while loop which you can do in kotlin i don't think you should though all right and we need a way to calculate a fibonacci number so i'm going to declare this function at the top here called fib And what that's going to do is we are going to get the nth Fibonacci number. So as it's defined in here, the first one is one or the zero with one is one. And the next one is two. So it goes one, two, three, five, eight. So for us, if, um, so if N is equal to one. So if n is the first term, we're going to return one. If n is the second term, we're going to, oh, we have to say that this function returns an int. We're going to return two. Otherwise, we're going to return fib of n minus one plus fib of n minus two. That's your generic Fibonacci number here. 
So we're going to, here's what we'll do actually. So we're just gonna use a for loop, for n in. Uh, we're gonna loop through Fibonacci terms one until a million or so. And then val fib is equal to fib of n. Uh, so this will calculate the Fibonacci number. And then what we're going to do is if fib mod 2. So if it's even, we are going to add it to our sum. And we're going to return sum dot two string. All right. So now we are solving problem number two and we have declared our sum to start at zero and we're looping through the nth Fibonacci term from first to a million. I know that, um, that will be big enough and we're calculating the nth Fibonacci term using the fib function. And if it is even, we're adding it. One thing that we did miss is if fib greater than 4 million, uh, break. Because it is not below 4 million. So if fib is greater than or equal to 4 million, break. Uh, we don't want to consider those anymore. So um, this should work. I think it's going to be slow um, and it's also ugly code, but let's give it a shot. I think I can just hit apply changes. Nope, nope, nope. Let's try running it again. All right, number two. That didn't take too long. Uh, let's copy the answer. And I keep pulling up that thing, paste it into here, type in the confirmation code, 07663, check. Yes. All right. We have solved two problems. Let's hop in and uh, let's make this code less gross. Um, so first of all, eh. All right, so we're going to simplify this step first. We're not going to worry about this Fibonacci function, which uh, is very, very inefficient. We're going to leave that how it is for now. We'll save that for another beer and code. Um, but in this case, we're going to kind of do the same thing we did last time. We're going to keep this. And we're going to dot to sequence, I think. No. This returns a sequence dot. We're going to use map, which will take this number and convert it into uh, whatever we return from here. So we're going to turn it into a Fibonacci number and we're going to filter or actually we're going to go until we're going to take while it is less than we're going to take while it is less than 4 million. And then we're going to filter um, if it mod two is equal to zero. And then we're going to sum them all. And then we're going to two string it. And then we're going to delete all of this code. Okay. Um, I think this is correct. I'm going to double check. So we're creating our sequence from just, these are just n. This is just n, uh, like the nth Fibonacci number here. So we're starting with the first Fibonacci number, going potentially up until the millionth. Um, but we just we're making sure that the Fibonacci number is below four million. Um, we're mapping, we're converting each item to the Fibonacci number. We're going to take those while 
they are less than 4 million. And then we're going to stop grabbing numbers because we are n never going to want any more of them. We're going to only take the ones that are even. We're going to add them up and then we're going to string them. I think. That's what it should do. Let's run it again and find out. Okay, I'm back. After a little bit of experimentation, I found that this solution is just absolutely garbage and will not work in the long run. So what we're going to do is we're going to clean up this Fibonacci function. Uh, one thing that well, the solution that we're going to use is called memoization um, because the way Fibonacci works is you end up solving the same problem many, many, many times uh, with, with really big numbers. We're going to save the results of this Fibonacci function um, in... Uh, in memory, so that way we don't have to uh, remember them. Um, so we're going to say uh, val memory uh, is equal to map or mutable map of, and it's going to be int to int. It's going to map the end number to the result of the function. And we're going to seed it with some data. We're going to seed it with um, one to one and two to two. And we're going to seed it with, um, now yeah, let's just start with that. So uh, we are going to now check in our memory first for the solution so if memory dot contains key n we're just going to return memory at n uh, otherwise oh otherwise we are going to do uh, the rest of our function um, val result is equal to if this else if this else that all right so what we are seeing here is something really cool with kotlin is you can use if else if and else and sort of chain them together and they will become uh you can store them into values so now we will return result eventually. And before that though, we will remember it. So we're going to memory at n is equal to result. And that will help speed up this Fibonacci function. So I don't know now if our function is fast enough for this to work. I still think, let's see if this works. Uh, this is guessing and checking and it is a bad way to solve problems um, but it is going to work so from 1 until uh, what I'm guessing to be a high enough number map the nth Fibonacci number to the actual Fibonacci value take while it's less than 4 million filter it for the even numbers sum it to string it blah all right let's run it Woohoo! Okay, that was way faster. We calculated way more Fibonacci numbers than we needed to. And let's see if we got the right number. 4613732. Ah, let's do some Googling. Where? 4613732. Okay. Uh, so, uh, upon further evaluation here, um, this is accurate. So. Uh, once again, this code, uh, not great. It's kind kind of thick and complex. I don't know if I know. Well, I guess first of all, I would format it like this, which does help uh, make it look a little bit more clean. Uh, you can kind of read it in its steps. It's very it's very uh, declarative, which is nice. So you're just declaring your sequence one until uh, this is a magic number, unfortunately map it so turn them into fibonacci numbers then take while they're all less than four million filter them to the even numbers sum them and two string them so 
I think the code looks a little cleaner than it did when it was looping and summing and uh, very procedural. Yeah. I also think it'll be easier for someone to hop in and, and look at and see what it's doing. So, all right. So that is the end of our first Kotlin Project Euler beer and code problems one and two. And we'll hop in and solve some more later. So uh, check out the video on how I built this little framework to uh, solve these um to solve the problems and uh, check back for more project Euler solutions um, soon. So yeah, cheers. Thanks for watching.